Hi guys, Chris here with the Betty Belfry and Crochet Basics. I am just popping onto your screen today to um, do a little video walkthrough and um, free pattern for this awesome little cancer ribbon fillet crochet. If you've never done a fillet crochet before, this is a good place to start. All you're going to need to know is how to do a chain, a single crochet into that chain, and uh, double crochets. Because not only do I have this little graph right here, um, I'm going to teach you how. Obviously, you can do this very simply on your own graph paper, so you should, after this tutorial, know how to do your own um, graphs for fillet crochet, and um, it will be real simple to just uh, create this from your own graph or to be able to read this right here, which is I went to exhaustive lengths. If you would like to to steal this from this video, I'm going to kind of hold it here so you can screenshot it. And um, if you would like to buy the pattern for the entire pocket shawl, this is part of that. But this is a good starting place if you don't want to have to buy the pattern and you're just looking to learn fillet crochet and you're not actually interested in the entire shawl. I'm giving this part away of it for free. So um, there are the first eight rows. There's row nine through 11. And this is, again, exhaustive links. Um, this looks like a lot of work. However, it's really not. This is just, it's a lot of repetition. Basically, what all of these rows are telling you how to do is just, you know, double crochet, chain a couple, skip here. I mean, that, that takes a lot of wordiness through a pattern just to be able to make a box. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if we could go through our patterns and say, just make a box, a box, a box, a box, a box. Um, but that's not how we do things in crochet. So um, we have our own way of writing things out and let me go into that. Um, I need to start off the video by saying, like I always do, that this is how I crochet. It in no way represents the entire crochet community. We are all artists and we're all going to develop our own specific way of creating. However, there are some basic standards in our community and that's what I'm here to teach you. That being said, I am located in the southern United States and I will be speaking in U.S. standard crochet terms. So, Again, if you know these basic stitches here, I will teach you how to create. Um, today, well, this is all we're going to be creating. This is actually um, a piece that is behind what we are creating. I've went ahead and attached that um, for my pattern for the shawl. Um, what I am using is a three millimeter crochet hook so grab you one of those if you want to do exactly what I'm doing I am also using a fingering weight yarn this is um, a beautiful yarn from knit picks I love their stuff I drive them insane making all of my orders it is a super wash wool so um, you can actually put this one into the washing machine um, and it is it's a beautiful color for if you're going to be doing um, breast cancer awareness fillet crochet I highly recommend um, this color here from Knit Picks and they're just a wonderful company and they have uh, great things so if you are going to be using a something that's a little bit bigger than the um, than the weight that I am using, if you're used to a worsted weight, which is a very much thicker weight than this, so it's a thicker yarn, um, your project is going to be bigger than mine and you would be able to put 
um, like a single crochet base behind it like you saw with uh, with my pocket here and make a pillow out of it. You can use this to make pockets to put on um, shawls or uh, cardigans or anything um, just that you wanted to put a little cancer ribbon on. So this is a very versatile thing to know. And um, just to get started off with it, I am not gonna be putting the directions in the frame anymore. I'm just going to have my hands in the frame and I'm going to read from them. So roll it back and screenshot if you would like to follow along and read that. Also, if you need to steal that right there is your chance. Go ahead and steal a screenshot of that because I am going to put it off to the side and just read it and do it right here in front of you so that um, so that you can actually see what I'm doing because my camera does not like to focus unless everything is completely out of the frame but my hands. So there we go. First instructions are to chain 42. I have already done that. And what we are going to do next is row one, single crochet into the second chain from the hook single crochet in the re remaining 40 stitches, chain one and turn for a total of 41 stitches. So second chain from the hook and you're just going to go all the way down this row crocheting here. Um, so I will see you in just a minute when you finish this first row. So I have completed my row one and I have a total of 41 single crochet stitches into my base chain. Row two is, up here, let me um, crochet over, over this little guy. I forgot to do that. I always crochet across my tails, especially when I am going to uh, be going right over the top of this uh, with some stitches again to secure it to another part of the project. So um, this row is a single crochet in each stitch across. So we are going to do another 41 stitches straight across this row and I will see you back at the end of the row. Okay, here I am at the end of row two. I have put a single crochet in each stitch across. So there is the end of row two. And the pattern says to chain three and then turn your work. Now, row three starts a little bit differently. Um, in parentheses, I have chain three from previous row counts as first double crochet. So that right there counts as your first double crochet. That would typically sit down in this stitch. So you are not going to double crochet in here. You're gonna skip that first stitch and then you are gonna work a double crochet into the next two stitches. So we're skipping this one and we're going here and here. So there are at the beginning of, let me find my paper here so you can kind of see where we are. We are on row three. So we have put this little block the little filled in block on row three and we are going in that direction. So now we have five, eight, 11, 12, five, nine, 12 stitches across that are open boxes. So what we are going to do is chain two, skip two stitches, double crochet into that third stitch there 
and that creates your first little box. And that's how you match with your graph pattern here. It is that simple. There is nothing uh, any harder about it. That's it. That's all you're going to do. So um, the written out instructions. Let's see if you can see that. Are I mean that's a, that's a little harder to follow if you're not used to reading a pattern. But all we're saying is we skip a stitch, we double crochet into the next two stitches, chain two, skip two stitches, and double crochet is how you create your box. Repeat that from the chain two, skip two stitches, double crochet, repeat from that little asterisk until two stitches remain in the row. So we are just gonna keep making boxes all the way across. And I'm going to do the first couple of rows all on camera. Let me move this out of the way. Maybe we will focus a little bit better so that you can see exactly everything that I do. And um, you will find filet crochet is fun and you will be creating your own graphs and just having a great time. You'll be making names in filet crochet. You'll be drawing pictures. It's just all kinds of fun. Um, when I first learned how to filet crochet, I went a little crazy with it. I just did uh, everything in filet crochet. I wanted everybody to have their own name and I got them framed for them. So uh, we, we all know which year I learned how to do that in my family because everybody got their name in filet crochet framed from me. So sometimes it's um, a little slow going when you first start working across these rows. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing because I'm actually looking at my work. I'm not seeing if... Uh, I'm focused. I hope it's focusing. And if you have any questions at the end of this video, um, say my camera didn't focus at a time that it needed to focus for you to be able to see exactly what I was doing and um, you just couldn't quite tell what was going on, ask me. Um, I would be more than happy to help. I love to help people learn to crochet. It is so much fun to me and I want everybody to have that much fun. So we have two more stitches in our row here. One, two. And when there are two more stitches, the directions say to put two double crochets into those spots. So let me explain to you what we are creating um, foundation wise here. What we have done is we have made a base we have a three over here and three over here. And this is going to be solid up the sides of our work. And we are going to create um, these little spaces right here. These are, you know, two stitches in the middle and one stitch on the end. So they are three. The boxes are three double crochets wide. And that's how um, you keep it all nice and straight and even. So at the end of row three, it says to chain three and turn your work. And again, just like always, um, we skip this first stitch and we do the first two stitches on top of the other double crochets right there. So see how we've got that on nice and even up the side. So the next instructions are, let's see, I'll show you this here. Kind of put that in the back. So we've done row two, or I'm sorry, row four, so we've done this first little box. We've got two empty boxes. And we're 
we're just going to chain two and go right into the top of that chain two go right into the top of that double crochet and oops split my yarn and that creates the two boxes that we need and then we've got one box up here that is uh, filled in so we're going to double crochet twice into our chain space and then we're going to double crochet into the top of that other double crochet and in this simple first form of fillet crochet now this can change up in fillet crochet when you start getting a little bit fancier but in this project and uh, with most of the beginning projects of fillet crochet you are going to be putting a double crochet in the top of every single stitch here so that you get the nice even boxes all the way up so row four in between this little leg here and that little leg here we have three six open boxes so we are going to do one two three Four, five, and six. Our next box is filled in, so we're going to put one, two, into the chain space and then one into the top of the double crochet we have two empty boxes here so we're just going to make two more empty boxes and then we're gonna we are at the end and we only have two more left Put your two double crochets into there. Now this is our chain three. So it wasn't a double crochet to begin with, but it counts as a double crochet. So we're just gonna go right into the top of it, just like that. We chain three and we turn our work. And just like always, we skip that first spot. And I cannot do a second. And we go into the third, and we are on row five. And if you're following along up here, we have, I'm gonna go a little bit faster now instead of sp explaining everything. I think you've kind of saw where we are going with this. So I'm just gonna kind of just kind of crochet in front of you guys for a minute. So we've got two filled in boxes and we're going to do one, come on. I'm so sorry guys, I'm trying to get this to focus on my hands here and We've got that second box filled in. In between those, we have four empty boxes. So there's one. two and three and four empty box 
boxes and now we're gonna put two more just like over here so we're gonna go into the chain space into the top of that double crochet now we're gonna go into the top of the next three double crochets for that second box to be filled in we've got two empty boxes next and now we are at our edge we have two left and okay I just happened to look up and it wasn't focused boy equipment failures so sorry if this isn't focusing properly so there we go we are finished with that row so we are going to chain three turn our work skip the first go into the second that gives us two and now we've got our first box finished there and we are on row six so we have three empty boxes to begin with one and we're gonna skip two go into the third because our boxes are three wide so we've got three empty boxes we're gonna do two filled in boxes rows one two three double crochets makes one filled box one in the chain space two in the chain space and one in the top of the double crochet makes the second one and we've got two empty boxes here so there is one and there is two and we are going to do two more boxes so two into the chain space and one into the top there's one box and three one two three double crochets makes the second box there and we've got three empty boxes and then our edge so we are just going to chain two skip two stitches go into that double crochet right there now we're going to drop our yarn that's what we're gonna do there we go and chain two double crochet chain two and double crochet and we have two more stitches left in the row so there's one and in the top of that chain three is two so so far it has not taken us very long to get to this point so what we have done is the bottom part about that much of that graph is what we have done so I am gonna just work all the way this way up to the top of this graph and um, I will see you at the end here and we'll talk about a couple of things and then we're done hi guys welcome back you should be coming up on the very last bit here with me I um, 
just looked at the graph. I didn't uh, trudge through all of the written instructions, and this probably only took me maybe 10 minutes. It's really a quick process once you get used to um, looking at the graphs and uh, doing fillet crochet. It really does not take very long to uh, complete a project like this. You see a lot of fillet crochets done in the threads, so in very, very thin and this is, again, this is a fingering weight yarn, so it is pretty thin, but a lot of times you will see this done in the crochet threads, um, and it's just absolutely stunning. You can do brilliant pictures. Um, so I just wanted to talk really quickly. If you're following along with my Etsy pattern, what you're going to do here is you're just going to take this, lay it, over the top and of course because there are different stitches you're gonna have to pull just a little bit um, because I'm using a wool and I haven't blocked any of this so the way that I attach mine is I just kind of straighten the edges up here and oh my gosh oh the back of my hook was stuck back here ah and I just kind of just start crocheting around the edge like there's no um, oh gosh I'm way out of frame um, there's no method to it so if you are following along with that pattern this is what I did I just went straight around my edges with a single crochet around the, the full post of the last uh, double crochet that's on the end here but you know that's that's all i'm gonna that's all i'm gonna say about that because it's pretty self-explanatory stuff again you will have to take and stretch this top over here once you get finished with the completed project you will block it um, and there will be no pull and tug to it so i just want to talk before the end of the video about how to create little graphs like this on your own very very simple um, and you know how to know how many to chain all that good stuff um, we talked about earlier in the video uh, how we um, we started with 42 a chain of 42 so all you're gonna do is um, just take the number of boxes here multiply it by three and that's that's how I came up with that number because each box is three wide so that's how I came up with that um, now I create my own graphs because I like the big thick boxes around a five by five area because I can count more quickly that way if you don't have access to a program that can help you or like I do, it's basically just a paint program and I go in and I actually create my own graphs. There are services online. I literally have never used any of them, but I know a lot of people that do and I hear that they are super easy to use. Um, so just do a search on uh creating a grid pattern and uh, you can create something like this pretty simply. I don't usually, the last thing I'd like to talk about is I don't usually go through all of this. Again, this front and half of a back page here only took me in practice about 15 minutes total to do. So this is a very wordy bit and I did that on purpose. I really wanted people um, in this pattern to be able to follow along with completely written out instructions. I have seen uh, some people in the groups that I'm a part of talk about, oh my gosh, I can't believe that all I got was a graph and I didn't get the written instructions. Um, to pattern writers, the written instructions are just, I mean, it's just so wordy and 
to most of us, I've talked to other pattern writers, writers about this. It just seems like it would confuse people more um, if they knew how to look at a graph, you know, and see what was going on. This would be just, it's just kind of wordy and pointless. So, but I did put it in this pattern completely. In most of my patterns, what I do is I will go through and give you the graph, the full graph, and I'll usually go through row three, four, and five so that you know which way I started, you know, um, written out the first few rows, and then you just kind of take off from there. There's really no point in going through all this wordiness. And if you print it out, I mean, it's just, it's kind of a waste of ink once you know how to read the graph. So I usually just teach you um, for through my patterns on the first few rows how to read my graph and then I just let you go with the graph from there and then I resume my written instructions on your basic stitches that do not involve graphs. So that is that and that is how to read an entire fillet crochet pattern, um, how to understand it, how to see this right next to this and you know just kind of decipher what's going on. If you have any questions whatsoever about filet crochet or um, any assertions, um, I'm definitely up for learning new things. So if you see anything that kind of confuses you and you're like, hey, Chris, well, you know, I, I kind of do it this way. Um, please tell me. I love, that's, that's a good thing about um, crochet is we all develop our own very unique ways of doing this. And when you are the pattern writer, the person that's developing, um, you know, something just going along and having no written instructions, you're just kind of making it up as you go. Um, you're going to do your edges different than I did. You're, you know, maybe going to put a different count there and maybe you're going to put, you know, a couple single crochet rows up here. Um, I love knowing what everybody else is doing. So please, um, please let me know. Comment below. I like to know everything that everybody's doing. I love crochet. And um, if you have created this project, let me know. I would love to see a picture of it. I want to see everything Thing beautiful that you guys create. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end of the video and I will pop back onto your screen very soon with another video tutorial. Thanks!